So welcome uh, to the course Power Electronics Application in Power System. As I uh, mentioned in my introductory lecture, this Power Electronics Applications refer to some Power Electronics based devices which are used uh, to, to improve the energy efficiency of power system, which are used to uh, reduce the energy losses uh, and thereby improve the energy efficiency. Uh, these devices are used uh, also for regulating the voltages, uh, thereby mitigating the over voltage and under voltages. These devices are also used to improve the dynamic performance, uh, to improve the stability, uh, to improve the damping of power systems. And these devices are often called as compensators and uh, reactive power compensator to be more precise okay and to understand what do you mean by reactive power compensators one needs to have a fair idea what is reactive power so in this particular lecture i'll discuss the basic concept of active and reactive power in a power system okay uh, and then slowly i'll uh, discuss uh, uh, what do you mean by reactive power compensator and then uh, I will move on this different modeling of uh, power system devices uh, and also modeling of power transmission lines. So, let us move. So, in this lecture, I will start with basic concepts of active and reactive power okay so the goal of this particular lecture is to define active and reactive power ok. So, to, to understand what is active and what is reactive power, let us take an example. Let us start with a single phase AC circuit. So, we will start with single phase AC circuit. Okay. So, let us consider we have a voltage source, purely sinusoidal voltage source, okay, and it is connected to a load all right now this represents purely sinusoid voltage source and this represents an inductive load. So, this box rectangular box is representing an inductive load right. Now, in this purely sinusoidal voltage source, we can represent the instantaneous voltage, we can represent the instantaneous voltage. as V t is equal to V m sin omega t. This is the basics of electrical, this is the basic of electrical engineering. You might have uh, seen this type of 
representation before. As you know in electrical uh, engineering we have uh, uh, we have representation of uh, these different quantities uh, in different way. For example, this representation is a time domain representation. This representation is a time domain representation and that is why this is instantaneous power, so uh, instantaneous voltage. So, this voltage uh, representation means at any instant of time say at t is equal to t the voltage would be V m sin omega t, where this V m is representing the maximum or peak value, peak value of voltage. And this omega, this omega, omega representing the frequency of the sinusoidal voltage. Now, if we plot this, this voltage, the plot would be something like t, like something like that. So, this is Vt, this is omega t. Whereas, this peak or maximum value is represented by this V m, right. So, this is somewhat known to all of us, ok. Now, uh, this is this uh, voltage source is representing this purely sinusoidal source and it is connected to an inductive load. Now, what do you mean by inductive load? As we know that we have three uh, basic elements in a circuit, three linear basic elements uh, in electrical engineering circuit theory. One is resistive, another is inductive, another is capacitive. So, usual load what we use in our day to day life represent a an inductive load which has certain component of resistivity and certain component of inductivity as well. So, basically this inductive load we will represent as a as a series connected resistance and an inductance. So, it is a representation of series connected resistance and an inductance ok. All right. So, and most of the practical loads with what we use in our day to day life are of inductive load. For example, an elect electric motor which is which represents a bulk volume in an electrical load either used in industries or even used in the domestic customers, uh, even used by the domestic customers. So, these uh, are highly inductive load ok. Now, when we have this representation you know that this voltage source is changing its sign from positive to negative right. So, at any instant of time let us say the polarity of the source is like this and due to this circuit connection some current which is flowing through this which is represented by the instantaneous current I t. Here this instantaneous current I of t is represented by similar to this voltage representation instantaneous voltage representation it is represented by some peak value of this current multiplied by sin omega t minus phi ok where I m is basically representing peak value of the instantaneous current peak value of the current and the phi is representing the phase difference. I will come to that what do you mean by phase difference ok. So, uh, now if we plot this voltage instantaneous voltage and this instantaneous current together in a same plot 
okay then we will understand that what is the phase difference okay but apart from that this is the usual representation of instantaneous current in a time domain uh, representation of electric circuit okay now if i plot this current in, uh, over the same plot here uh, with this voltage and suppose this is it then this representation of it will be something like that it will also have same frequency as you can see this omega and that omega are same so it will have a same frequency okay and it will also be like a sinusoid but its representation is something like that okay now the question is uh, if you compare this this voltage and this current then you will see that there is a phase difference and that phase difference is basically phi. Now, what is phase difference? Phase difference is you can see if you uh, consider this is an instant where voltage goes to 0 and uh, increasing uh, in a positive half cycle uh, as a reference. Then with respect to that reference, the current starts increasing this uh, current reaches at 0 and increasing in a positive half cycle after a high degree apart. So, the difference of this is the phase difference. So, if this difference phi will remain same uh, if you consider the peak, peak value of these two uh, quantities. So, whatever when this voltage goes to the positive peak after a high angle the current will also go for its peak value and this will remain same uh, and uh, this will continue uh, for all other instances. So, where the instant for if you compare the in same instant of voltage and same instant of current they will have a phase difference of 5 degree ok. This is the normal concept that we have ok. Now, coming back to our goal that we will try to define what is active and reactive power ok. In DC circuit what we have seen the power is simple the uh, multiplication of voltage and current ok. But uh, as you know in DC circuit the voltage and currents are constant in nature ok, they are not time varying. That is what the difference uh, of AC circuit and DC circuit right. Now in uh, AC circuit both voltage and current are time varying. Now the question is uh, then how do you know that what is your power? Okay. So, here we will define a term that is called instantaneous power. This instantaneous power we represent it as a small p of t, it is basically the multiplication of this instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current. So, it is equal to V of t multiplied with I of t. Okay. Now, this instantaneous power is neither active power nor reactive power, it is a something different. Okay. So, it is uh, at any instant of time if you just multiply the instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current whatever value you will be getting that is instantaneous power. Okay. Now, we know that V t is equal to V m sin omega t and I t is equal to I n sin omega t minus phi. So, if we put uh, both the expressions over here. So, what we will get is this is V m sin omega t this is this multiplied with I m sin omega t minus phi right. Now, we will we'll do some simplification of this expression. Let us keep this V m I m outside and then what we will get it sin omega t sin omega t minus phi. All right. Now, now this is an expression which is similar to sin a multiplied by sin b. Okay. So, when you have this expression, so what I can do is that I will 
multiply and divide 2 with this expression. So, what we will get? We know that 2 sin a sin b is basically equal to cos a minus b minus cos a plus b. So, what we will get is v m i m divided by 2 cos a minus b is cos phi minus cos a plus b is cos 2 omega t minus phi. So, this is what we get. Okay. Now, we will keep on simplifying this. So, we know that again let me write it again p t is equal to v m i m divided by 2 cos phi minus cos 2 omega t minus phi. Okay. Now, we can expand this cos 2 omega t minus phi considering that it is cos a minus cos b. So, what we will get? Let us see. So, it is equal to v m i m divided by 2 cos phi minus. So, if we expand this then what we will get is cos 2 omega t cos phi minus sin 2 omega t sin phi. Okay. So, this this we got with by expanding this cos 2 omega t minus phi. Now, we can further simplify this as v m i m divided by 2. So, here cos phi and cos phi are common. So, I can take cos phi outside so that I can write it as a 1 minus cos 2 omega t. Okay. Similarly, this side I will keep it as it is. So, I will multiply v m i m divided by 2 sin phi sin 2 omega t. All right. So, I will get uh, these two expressions. Okay. Now, what we will do here is we will consider that this is basically equal to p 1 t and this component is basically equal to p 2 t. So, we, we, we finally arrived at the expressions of this instantaneous power. Remember, this is instantaneous power, instantaneous power of the single phase circuit as a resultant of two quantities one is p 1 t another was p 2 t where p 1 t is this and p 2 t is this. Okay. All right. Now, what we will do is we can write p 1 t is equal to v m i m divided by 2 cos phi 1 minus cos cos 2 omega t. Okay. So, this v m i m by 2 cos phi this component is time invariant means that it does not change with time. So, I can write it as a constant this constant let us write as capital P. So, the whole expression becomes capital P multiplied by 1 minus cos 2 omega t, where capital P is equal to v m i m by 2 cos phi. Right. Similarly, we will represent P 2 t that is this component, this component. So, what we will write this is equal to v m i m by 2 sin phi sin 2 omega t. Now, again you look at this component is not time varying. So, let us represent it, a, it as a constant that is capital Q. So, this represent capital Q sin 
to omega t where capital Q is basically equal to V m I m by 2 sin phi. Okay. So, if I uh, summarize what I have done so far, then I can say that the instantaneous power of a single phase circuit uh, is expressed as a resultant of two components, one is P1, another is P2 and P1, P2 expressions we have write, uh, written over here. Now, the next thing that we will do is we will plot these two uh, quantities that is P12 and P2t. So, if I plot this P1t with respect to this time, then what sort of plot I will get? We will look at it is equal to P1 minus cos 2 omega t. So, if we plot 1 minus cos 2 omega t, what we will get? that it is pulsating above the abscissa. So, it, it, it will be something like this. and so on. Okay. Now, suppose this corresponds to some value of phi that is equal to uh, 30 degree. Okay. Now, if we consider phi is equal to 0, then how would be the plot? So, at phi is equal to 0, you can see this, this p will be equal to v m i m by 2. Uh, so, that value will be eventually higher than that uh, phi is equal to 30 degree. So, the plot would be something like this. Okay. So, this corresponds to phi is equal to 0 degree. Now, similarly, if we consider phi is equal to 90 degree, then how would be the plot? It, if, if you consider that phi is equal to 90 degree, cos 90 degree would be 0, the plot will be exactly coincide with the x axis or abscissa. So, this corresponds to phi is equal to 90 degree. Okay. So, I will uh, write this comment uh, later on, but this is what we get. Now, if you look at the in general, you know, uh, characteristics of this P 1 T, then you will see it is pulsating above the abscissa and it always has some non negative average values. So, if you uh, take the average value corresponding to the plot phi is equal to 0 degree, this average value will come over here. Similarly, uh, when you call phi is equal to 30 degree, so let us take the average value uh, here. So, this is suppose the average value when corresponds to phi is equal to 0 degree. So, this is suppose the average value. Then corresponds to this phi is equal to 30 degree, the average value will be somewhere here. And corresponding to this phi is equal to 90 degree, the average value would be 0. So, what you can comment over here is this P 1 T is I can write it as a remark. So, so, first remark will be P 1 T is pulsating in nature. Second comment is that there is a non negative average value for P 1 T and third is if we increase phi, if phi is increasing then the average value is decreasing. 
this arrow uh, representing uh, upward arrow means that if we increase phi what we can see over here if I increase phi then average value is decreasing that is what the remark that we can get from this plot. Now let us plot P 2 T as well which is representing this. So, as we know P 2 T is equal to Q sin 2 omega t. So, if we plot P 2 t over time, then what we will get? We will get that it will also uh, behave like a sinusoidal uh, it, it will it will be up like a sinusoid rather ok. So, if your q so suppose this is the plot of this p 2 2 corresponds to phi is equal to 30 degree then how, how would be the plot when uh, phi is equal to 90 degree. So, as we know q is equal to v m i m by 2 sin phi. So, what you can see is here is that if, uh, if phi is increasing q will also increase. Okay. So, here this q what q this what q represents q is basically the peak value. So, this is nothing but q in this particular plot. So, when if, if you increase phi is equal to 60 degree then this p 2 t plot will be something like this. It frequency will remain same only thing is that its uh, peak value will change. So, this is corresponds to phi is equal to 60 degree. If you further increase phi let us say if phi is equal to 90 degree then the characteristics will be something like this this uh, plot will be something like this. So, this corresponds to phi is equal to 90 degree. Now, what will happen when phi is equal to 0 when phi is equal to 0 this will when phi is equal to 0 this q will be equal to 0. So, the plot will just superimposed here. Okay. So, if I summarize what we, we got uh, so far, then it will be something like that number 1 is P 2 varies like a like a sinusoid function ok. So, the q represents q represents the peak value peak value of P 2. Now, third remark will be if we take the average of each of these uh, characteristics what would be the average since it represents a sinusoid the average would be 0. So, the average of P 2 will always be 0. Why I wrote always be 0? That means, irrespective of irrespective of this phi. So, whatever the value of phi might be the average of this P 2 will be always 0. Okay. So, if we just compare 
these two uh, characteristics one is P 1 T another is P 2 T then what we can uh, comment that they are of different in nature P 1 T is, uh, is a component of this instantaneous power which is always pulsating in nature but it pulses above the abscissa above the x axis ok above the horizontal axis and it always has some non negative or either 0 that means either 0 or positive average value. Whereas, if you look at this P 2 T it, it uh, also varies, but it varies it also varies with time, but it varies like a sinusoid. It means that it has some positive value in some instant of time as well as it has some negative value ok. So, when we have so uh, then uh, as you know that for a sinusoid this average value is 0. So, uh, the average value of P 2 will always be 0 irrespective of this angle phi and as we know that uh, from this, this characteristics this value of Q is changing. So, for example, this uh, whatever this value of this Q was when phi is equal to 30 degree the value of uh, this Q changes to this when phi is equal to 60 degree further it changes to this when phi is equal to 90 degree. So, the value of Q is getting change uh, if we change the phase angle ok. Now, if we summarize what we uh, get uh, in this particular uh, you know uh, study that we get the instantaneous power of two component one is P 1 T another is P 2 T one is pulsating in nature another is pulsating like a sinusoid one is pulsating always uh, above the abscissa another is uh, pulsating along this abscissa one is having always a non negative uh, average another is zero average ok. So, what we will define is that we have two components of this power in a single phase circuit. So, what we will write is that for single phase circuit we have two components of instantaneous power. Now, that means we have two components of instantaneous power one is P 2 T another is P 1 T ok and they differ uh, by their characteristics. So, how they are different with the characteristics you can see here you can see if we take the average value of P 1 what this average value is basically representing this average value is basically representing nothing but P ok. So, this average value is changing when phi is changing. Now, when this phase angle will change when we will change different uh, when we will change the loading ok when we uh, uh, add this load or when we uh, uh, change the load from one particular type to another particular type then phi might be changed ok. So, when phi is changed this average value of this will change ok and this average value will basically depend upon this average value is basically nothing but this p. So, this p is of a import p is uh, basically is of important. So, this p what it is basically doing it is converting this electrical energy to a uh, useful work ok and that is why this p is uh, defined as a active power ok. So, what we can write is that these components in 
in principle differ to each other. Number three or third observation that we can write is a third remark we can write is this the average of this P, P 1 T is the average of P T itself. Okay. So, this since you know that uh, this average of this P 2 T is 0 always. So, average of this P 1 T is the average of the instantaneous power itself itself and it is expressed by capital P. This capital P, this is defined as active power because it converts electrical energy to an useful work. For example, if it is a uh, if this load is of a motor, then you know that motor consume some amount of electric power electrical power to convert it is uh, to a mechanical energy. So, that we can connect it with a pump or some other uh, device to, to do the some uh, work like uh, in lift we have in elevator we have all this are run by motor. Similarly, uh, when we will uh, pump water from uh, downstairs to upstairs we use motor. So, there are multiple purposes in industry if you go visit you will see there are many motors for different applications. But all motors consume certain amount of electrical power just to convert it to some amount of mechanical power and that is primarily done by this average of this instantaneous power and that is known as your active power since it is converting this energy to some useful work. Whereas, this P 2 T if you can see that uh, since its average is 0, it means that uh, it, it sometimes is positive and sometimes is negative. When it is positive, if you consider that it, it consumes certain amount of power, when it is negative, it returns back the same amount of power. So, it is ultimately whatever it is consuming, it is returning back as well. So, it is uh, not consuming any uh, power to uh, do some useful work. So, that is why we will call it, it is a uh, not a power for energy conversion which is used for energy conversion, but it has some significance. Okay. So, that is why we call this as a reactive power. So, actually this P 2 is not a reactive power, but you can see that this peak value of P 2 which, which is changing over this phi, this phase angle is called this reactive power because this will have some significance which we will study in the further uh, lecture. So, what we can write is that the peak value of this P 2 that is Q is called or defined as reactive power. Okay. It is not this P 2, but it peak value. Why it is so? Because you can see that when this phi is changing, only peak is changing. Other shape etcetera, other properties remain same. So, that is why peak is basically changing with respect to phi and this is a, an important parameter. Later on we will see in the performance of a power system and that is why we define this as a uh, separate quantity that is reactive power. Okay. Now, this study is all about 
uh, the single phase circuit. Now, what will happen if we have a three phase circuit because as you know that normal power system is of three phase. So, let us do the same analysis for three phase circuit. Okay. So, suppose we have a balanced three phase supply. So, here our assumption is that we have a balanced three phase voltage source and we have a balanced pre -page load. Okay. Now, what do you mean by balanced three phase source? Uh, it is taught in a basic electrical engineering course that when we, when you have uh, a three phase source which are having same uh, RMS or this peak value and they are uh, exactly separated with a phase difference of 120 degree or uh, 2 pi by 3 to each other. Okay. So, when we have so, then it is a balanced three phase source. Similarly, what do you mean by balanced three phase load? Balanced three phase load means three identical loads in every aspect. If it is an inductive load, then uh, all these loads, inductive loads are identical. Similarly, if it is a capacitive load or resistive loads, then they are identical. So, three identical load constitute a three phase balanced load and three uh, uh, phase voltage source having a same RMS value of individual phases and they are ap apart to each other 120 degree that is uh, uh, 2 by by 3 then it is a balanced source. Okay. So, what will be the expression of balanced source and balanced load? So, if I consider that three phase sources are like this one is VAT and it is represented by Vm sin omega t. Then for balance source then V B t will be equal to V m sin omega t let us say minus 2 pi by 3 and V c t is represented by V m sin omega t minus 4 pi by 3. Okay. So, you look at these three sources, they are having same RMS value because they are having same peak values. Okay. They are having identical frequencies and their phase difference uh, between this to this is 2 pi by 3, here also between this to this is 2 pi by 3 and this to this also is 2 pi by 3. So, when you have uh, such a kind of source then it is a called balance source. Okay. Now, when you have a balanced source and three identical load connected to this source, then what we will do is they will uh, you know uh, draw the similar current uh, uh, what we have seen in case of uh, single phase circuit. So, let us write it as a IAT. IAT is the current drawn by this phase A the load connected to phase A. So, this is suppose I m sin omega t minus phi I b t is equal to I m sin omega t minus 2 pi by 3 minus phi. 
here phi is the phase angle difference between this current and that voltage. Similarly, this phi is the phase angle difference between this current and that voltage. Okay. Similarly, this will be equal to I C T is equal to I M sin omega t minus 4 pi by 3 minus phi. Okay. Now, this is representing balance load. Okay. So, when we have a three phase balance source and a three phase identical load, identical load stands for uh, three identical loads connected to three different phases. Okay. So, then what would be the expression for instantaneous power? So, here the instantaneous power P t will be equal to P a t plus P b t plus P c t, where P a t is basically the instantaneous power in phase A. Okay. P b t is representing the instantaneous power in phase B, P c t is representing the instantaneous power in phase C. So, P a t is nothing but the multiplication of V A T with I A T, P B T is representing the multiplication of V B T with I B T, P C T is basically representing multiplication of V C T I C T. Okay. So, if you put the expression of V A T and I A T and multiply and add with what you get in with V B T I B T and V C T I C T, then you will get a result which is substantially different to the single phase circuit. What we will get? The result would be, I am not deriving all this thing, this is I am leaving to you. If you just do this mathematical derivation, then what we will get is, this is equal to V M I M by 2 cos phi. Okay. So, that is what is substantially different to what we get in a single phase circuit. So, what we get over here is that if we sum up the instantaneous power, then we will get an expression which is time invariant. So, this expression is time invariant. That is what a substantial difference to the single phase circuit. Then, does it mean that uh, we do not have the uh, you know a similar type of definition like active and reactive power? No, the answer is not. So, what is this 3 V m I m by 2 cos phi? So, if we go back and see uh, in a single phase circuit, then we know that V m I m by 2 cos phi is basically P. So, if we consider that this is P, then this is nothing but 3 times of P. Okay. So, 3 times of P. So, the question is one may understand that okay, it is a 3 phase uh, system. So, we will get power since all these phase voltages are identical and balance and these loads are identical. So, overall uh, you know power consumption is 3 times of the individual phase power consumption that is somewhat logical to understand. Okay. But the question is where does this Q goes? Here, does it mean that we do not have the concept of reactive power here? Actually, it is not. So, what we can write as a remark for this particular system? So, for three phase balance system, what will be the remark? Number one, the instantaneous power is found to be
प्राइम इनवेरियंट दि इन्स्टैंटेनियस पावर इज ऑल्सो फाउंड टू बी थ्री टाइम्स ऑफ एक्टिव पावर ऑफ इंडिविजुअल फेजेस so this is a great advantage rather in a three phase system that even though you have that uh, you know individual phases uh, this this uh, powers uh, instantaneous powers are pulsating in nature individual phases the uh, instantaneous power will pulse at similar to what we discuss in a uh, single phase circuit so in spite of the individual phases uh, having pulsating instantaneous power uh when you sum up you will get a constant quantity that is an advantage and that is uh, you know uh, why you know three phase induction motor is one of the kind of robust uh, and most uh, you know rugged and efficient uh, motor used in last uh, uh, 140 years since its uh, invention okay uh, so this is what the benefit the advantage okay the another thing is that although the individual phases phases have this p to t that is the pulse sinusoidal uh, you know the component which varying as a sinusoid so individual phases have p to t their summation at any instant is 0. You can see, you can go back and uh, you know uh, this uh, you know uh, find out this P1, you can just resolve this individual instantaneous power into P180 and P280. Similarly, here P 1 B T and P 2 B T, here also P 1 C T and P 2 C T, what is a similar way I did in, a, in case of single phase circuit. If you do, if you do it, then you, are, you will see that P 2 uh, A and P 2 B and P 2 C, their summation at any instant of time is 0. So, although they ha we have reactive power in the system but it is not appearing in the instantaneous power and instantaneous power is a constant quantity and that is an advantage ok. So, this is all together this uh, our findings in this lecture. So, what we if we summarize my our finding here that uh, I can say that in a uh, single phase circuit we get uh, two components of instantaneous power one is uh, pulsating in nature with a some average value either it can be 0 or it can be a positive value, but it never be negative. So, we since it is converting uh, this power to some useful work we call it active power or sometimes real power ok. And we, we also have seen that in, in an inst, uh, in a single phase inst, uh, in a single phase circuit the there is another component of instantaneous power which is varying like a sinusoid. Okay. So, its average is obviously 0, but its peak value depends upon the, the phase difference of the voltage and current and obviously that depends upon the types of load wh what we will be using and that is basically uh, also an important to us. Why it is important to us that I will explain in the next lecture and that is defined as a reactive power. Reactive power is not defined as the average because average of P2 is basically 0 but its peak value is defined as the reactive power. It has some role in power system, it has some significant role in power system which I am going to discuss in the next lecture, but we will define it as a reactive power. Whereas, when we uh, consider a three phase balance source and three phase balance load, 
if we sum up the individual phase instantaneous power what we have seen is we will get a constant quantity or time invariant quantity which is nothing but 3 multiplied by individual phase active power consumption. Okay. And in individual phase although we have reactive power consumption if you sum up the end at any instant of time it becomes 0. Okay. So, that is what uh, we, we found from this today's lecture and uh, we, we will proceed this with the next lecture to understand the what is the role of this reactive power then and why do we need this reactive power compensation. This is very important. Okay. So, this is all about this first lecture. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.